Hey guys, it's Sam. Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are having an amazing day. As you guys can see by the tail down there, today we are talking about Heaven's Gate and this just group of people that truly believed um, that extraterrestrials or, you know, UFOs were going to come by and soup them off to another planet. Um, it was a really interesting case to look up. I knew very little information about the actual group. Um, all I knew was like that it happened here in San Diego where I live and it was just about like UFOs um, But yeah, it goes it goes much deeper than that So um, before we get started, please don't forget to subscribe and the little button down there And if you want to know more about Heaven's Gate, then just keep on watching Marshall Herf Applewhite was the co-founder of Heaven's Gate he was born into a very conservative family and his father was actually a Presbyterian minister. He studied music and eventually became a music teacher. Although he was gay, he got married and he had two children. He was a professor at the University of Houston in Texas, but unfortunately, although he was married, he had trouble suppressing attraction for the same sex. Unfortunately, he lost his job at the university due to an affair that he was having with the student came to light. In an effort to cure his homosexuality, he begged the doctors for a psychiatric stay. During this um, stay at the psychiatric hospital, he this is where he actually met Bonnie Lou Nettles. Uh, she was actually a nurse there. She eventually became the co-founder of Heaven's Gate. She practiced astrology and they soon became inseparable. When they first met, Bonnie was actually married and had four children. She was raised Baptist, but she became a member of the Theosophical Society, and this is where she learned astrology. And she would also say that she would receive messages from higher up spirits. Now, both of them decided that they were going to leave Houston on in a spiritual quest and while they were on the desert they claimed to have received messages from extraterrestrials asking them to spread the word and spread the messages they said that the extraterrestrials asked them to spread the to spread the message to earthlings about the destiny of the universe they lived in. Now at this point, both of them believed that they had been chosen to carry on a very special mission. And this special mission meant that they had, pre they had to prepare a group of women and men so that they could eventually travel to the planet of the extraterrestrials. According to the message of the extraterrestrials, those who agreed to follow them into that mission would get picked up from Earth on a spaceship and they were going to be brought up to another world. After reflection and research, they, Marshall and Bonnie, they realized that they were actually um, the two that they mentioned in the book of Revelation in the Bible. And they started traveling the United States to spread the word. Now, a few people did join them and they would actually live off of the money that the new members would supply. Obviously because they had no other money. Now, around this time, Bonnie and Marshall were actually arrested for a card fraud as well as they had stolen a rental car. Marsha was actually sentenced to six months in prison, but both charges were 
dismissed for Bonnie. I actually couldn't find the reason why they were dismissed, but they were. After serving his sentence, they both moved to Wyoming so that they could continue to spread the message. Now, the objective of the group was to purify their souls so that they would eventually be ready to travel on the spaceship. Now, in order for them to purify their souls, they had to give up a few things. These included the elimination of all sexual relations, so they had to cut out, you know, sex from their life, as well as uh, practice self-denial of all human needs, such as affection, food, and comfort. And so, as the group grew and had more members, they continued their um, travels to spreading the word around the United States. They preached that the human body will be abandoned abandoned for the evolutionary level above human, where their spirit would live on forever. Of course, they would also say to not trust any of the other religions and what they would preach. And they would continually say that the spaceship was near and, you know, the um, trip was getting closer and closer. And the members of the um, group had to give their power up to the extraterrestrials. So, you might be wondering, how did one actually become a member of Heaven's Gate? Well, let me tell you. <laughs> In order to join the group, members would have to cut ties with their families and they would then have to separate from all of their material possessions everything they owned they had to again just leave it behind as well as cut all contact from every single family member as well as friends obviously as well as comply with all the rules that marshall and bonnie had put in place now, at this point, Bonnie and Marshall had acquired these nicknames and Marshall was called Doe and Bonnie was called T. The members saw themselves as students of T and Doe, which again were, were the um, nicknames that they gave themselves, Marshall and Bonnie. And they had to be partnered up with another person so that they could stay accountable about their actions. Complete immersion into the group's routine was required in order to be considered a good member. And obviously knowledge of the purification processes ensured that all members would be ready for when the spaceship would arrive. Obviously since nobody knew when the spaceship would arrive, all the members had to always be ready and stay in a state of purity now it was forbidden to have friends in the group so although you lived with you know these people you couldn't be friends with them according to marshall and bonnie and they were told that in order for them to experience a higher level of being they had to be able to show no human feelings now, their daily lives were really dedicated to just abandoning their human needs and habits in order to attain a higher level of purity. Members' lives were governed by several rules designed to limit their human reactions. They actually did follow very carefully a diet that would help them reduce the need of food. Now, in order for them to be ready, they followed different types of activities during the day. For example, sometimes they would have to meet their um, fellow members, so remember that they were like paired up, every 12 minutes to ensure that they were their behavior conformed the overall group norm now other days the members were required to wear a cone 
to simulate the effect that they would experience when they would you know transcend to their life as an extraterrestrial and they wanted uh, Marshall and Bonnie wanted them to wear the cones so that they could get used to having cones in their heads. Now their basic beliefs um, were now their basic beliefs were that in the right moment, so when the spaceship would land, only the true believers will be the ones to be picked up and taken. Now obviously this belief would lead to the requirement of constant purification. The members, their vehicle, which would be their body, was an envelope and it was a container for their real identity. So meaning that the body, inside the body, their real identity was contained. Another rule that they also had to follow was to eliminate any distinctive personality traits, for example, gender traits or wearing identical clothing and similar hair hairstyles. Now, shortly after they arrived in Wyoming, one of the members, uh, one of the one of the male members, started questioning the philosophy of the group. Now, this this now this person believed that once um. Once they reached the level of purity um, that they had to achieve, they would be able to resume their typical human conduct, such as, you know, having sex and, for example, drinking alcohol. And due to this, you know, male member kind of disrupting the group's rules, some people started actually engaging in sex with other members as well as taking drugs and um, drinking alcohol. In order to regain control over the group, Marshall and Bonnie had to change their tactics and kind of like the things that they would, they would tell the group so that they would try and control them again. At this point, Heaven's Gate did lose some members. Now, in 1985, Bonnie actually passed away from cancer and Marshall interpreted the death of Bonnie as a sign of great power. Now, in 1991, the group was able to produce a television show called Beyond Human, The Last Call, and that did help them recruit um, more members. The group was able to start putting more advertisement. In January of 1994, the group actually visited 22 cities and 22 states and 63 cities in order to recruit new members. The group actually held their last group meeting in Boston in 1994. At the end of this tour is when the group decided to return to their life of seclusion and they rented a house in Rancho Santa Fe right here in San Diego. That's about 30 minutes from where I live. And the group decided to actually open up a um, website design business in order to, you know, recruit money. And this also helped the group kind of um, spread their ideology. Members were expected to question their personal needs. For example, if a member needed a new deodorant she had to submit a re written request to Marshall now members did engage in some type of leisure activity like they watched episodes <laughs> of Star Trek and X-Files and on one occasion the group actually traveled to Las Vegas and they visited the Stratosphere Hotel apart from doing everything they had to do in order to be pure. The members were instructed by Marshall that they had to be ready in case the spaceship would get there. Obviously because again, they didn't know exactly when it was gonna get there. And so the members would continue to prepare themselves for the grand departure. Now in their daily attendance, you know how they would go and talk about their mission to other people. Marshall would 
make sure to divide the groups on members and non-members and members actually had forbidden to talk to any people that would go to the um, sessions according to Marshall the members of the group ha had to neutralize the effects of Lucifer who was in the room in the form of audience now for Marshall obviously society was working with the devil so people that lived on earth and not obviously in his cult would accept the responsibilities dictated by the body and evil forces in order to maintain world stability so he was basically saying that a person would follow whatever satan would say in order to keep a balance in the world now marshall believed that inferior forces had made humans be addicted and dependent on human needs and their bodies and that they were and to them it was very important on actually satisfying their human desires actual view all consumer foods from toothpaste to clothing as accentuating men and women's sexuality he considers society as a whole to be very perverse as it was sexuality and obviously i truly believe and you can see that it had this had to do a lot with him kind of like repressing his homosexuality and just something that i'm guessing he could not accept now obviously in order to follow the cult's rules members again had to make the difficult choice of rejecting any responsibility to being humans from 1994 to 1997 the group was said to become androgynous and they all had identical hairstyles and clothing including some of the members even traveled to mexico in order to get castrated because they believed that would help them into um, suppressing their sexual desires now in 1996 they started renting a house here in san diego rancho santa fe and this house was uh, a 9200 square feet mansion located in rancho santa fe san diego and they would refer to this house as the monastery and the group would pay around seven thousand dollars for the monthly rent that same month the group actually purchased alien abduction insurance and this was and this would cover up to 50 members and it would actually pay out one million dollars per person the policy actually included abduction impregnation or death by aliens now on november 5th 1996 a radio host announced that an amateur photographer had actually taken a picture of something that was trailing the i can never say this the Haley boop bop um comment and so Marshall stated that the object was actually the, the extraterrestrial spaceship coming to pick them up. Just before the mass suicide, the group's website actually updated with a message. And it's, this said, Haley Bob brings closure to Heaven's Gate. Our 22 year old, our 22 years of classroom here on planet earth is finally coming to conclusion graduation from the human evolutionary level we are happily prepared to leave this world and go with t's crew a few days before the actual suicide some members did actually videotape their they videotaped themselves and their testimonials that they were leaving their bodies voluntarily and without fear 
out on March 26, 1997, 21 women and 18 men were found in very advanced decomposition in their Rancho Santa Fe home. They were all between the ages of 26 and 72. So in the investigation, it is said that they were three different groups. And so it was 15, 15, and 8, I believe. 9, sorry. And 9 between approximately March 22nd and March 26th. And so one group would, you know, commit suicide and then the other one would stay behind. Marshall was the third to last member to die. And two people did remain after him and would be the only ones that would be found with bags over their heads as well as not having the purple clothes um, or the it was like a blanket that they had on top of each of the other now the applesauce that they ingested was laced with barbiturates and they passed it down with vodka their deaths were actually attributed to suffocation with a plastic bag that covered their heads all 39 of them were actually wearing the exact same clothes, which were um, black shirts and sweatpants. And they actually had an identical uh, pair of black and white Nikes, as well as a patch that said Heaven's Gate Away Team. Each member also had a $5 bill as well as three quarters. And this was a reference to Huck Finn which it is stated that it cost $5.75 to ride the tail of a comet to heaven. So because they believe that there were three different groups, now one of the groups um, that was left behind, they would actually, um, once a member was dead, a living member would arrange the body by removing a plastic bag from the person's head and then followed by posing the body so that it would lay neatly in its own bed. And I'll insert pictures. Um, they're obviously on the web and um they had like also like beds all around the house and they would also put a purple cloth off um, just covering their face and their torso for privacy so in an interview with harry robinson he was one of the two surviving members said that the identical clothing was used in order to was used as a uniform to show unity within the group so yeah, that is it for today's video. Um, this was a kind of interesting story because I feel like they took the belief of UFOs just to a whole other level. And I mean, I personally believe in aliens and I obviously believe that we are not the only ones in this universe and there are there's more out there um, that we don't know about or maybe we do. <laughs> uh, but that we don't actually follow through and like investigate. But yeah, it was it was um, it was kind of heavy to read that it was just so close. And in '97, I was born '91, so I was about six years old when this happened. Obviously, actually, I actually don't have any recollection. It, although my mom did watch the news, like the American news, although we lived in TJ Tijuana. Um, but yeah, um, I hope you guys learned something new um, from my video. And as always, the products that I use in today's video are going to be linked down in the description box as well as all my social media. And until then, I'll see you guys on my next one. Bye!